Today on Lift Arc Builds, we take this giant metal tube and start making it into a metal sculpture. What does that mean? We'll figure it out. All right, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of giant metal tubes. Yeah, that's not funny. Another day, another ride in the crane truck. Hello, sir. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Hitching a ride? Good. How's the old girl? I have to keep on um, fixing it. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, she keeps on running out of fuel. <laughs> So I have to keep on It'll do more that. in there. Yeah. So anyway, we are heading to a storage yard owned by Mr. Mark Pace of EC Pace. EC Pace is a local construction company, but on a giant scale. On behalf of Black Dog Salvage, I'm buying a giant 30 inch metal pipe that's 3 8 thick, 30 inch in diameter, and 20 feet long. We're gonna turn it into a helical sculpture for a customer of Black Dogs. But anyway, we're gonna go pick that uh, casing up today, dig it out of the back of a storage yard, use Wyatt's sweet grain truck here, and um, then we're gonna run by the welding supply store and buy a 50 foot torch for my hypertherm plasma cutter so that we can cut this pipe apart. This will all make more sense later. <laughs> I love this series of hills. If you do it right on the way back, if you hit a certain speed at the top of the first one, you don't have to touch any pedals until you get to the stop sign. I'm not doing that in this car. No. <laughs> <laughs> Time to sell. Yahoo! Yahoo! That's it, 30, I think it's 20 feet. This is a full length to you? Yeah. That's 20, that's it. Yeah. All right, game plan. I think we can uh, move that stuff right there and get into it from the side. Get into it this way? Yeah. If he moves this stuff here. It'll make life easier. Yeah, let's do a combo plan. What we're buying today is called a casing. I guess because when they drill big holes, either sideways or down, they stick these casings into the holes to keep the holes from closing up. I think that's right. I can't remember exactly, but basically they case the auger bits. So the casings would be sized to the auger bits, I think. But we're making a giant helix. So figured it's easier to start with a big cylinder than try to wrestle some giant steel into a helical curve with yeah. using a bender the wrong way. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. So the casing we want is the one in the back there, 20 feet by 30 inch. Now one of those tires costs more than my car. All, all of your cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have eight feet hanging off the back. We'll put a flag on it. That's all we can do. I hope, we, I, hope I have a flag. That's a strong fork. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't even have to use the crane. Oh, we will. Yeah, we will later, that's for sure. Found it. It looks like it's uh, rocket powered now.
Hello! Nice work. It's like uh, natural reverb. Luke, I am your father. I just realized recently that that quote's actually not right. right. He says, no, I am your father. No, I am your father. I was quoting Luke. Tommy Boy. La, 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 Luke. Luke, I am your father. Oh, I've interrupted happy time. Oh, yeah. Quoting a misquote. Yeah. Reverb! <laughs> Feel good? Is that Brothers? that? Oh. Feel good. I got it now. Didn't hear the, your humming voice didn't have enough bass in it. All I gotta watch out for is the, that thing swinging around when you're making a turn. Man, we've, we've driven so many sketchy rigs around Roanoke, things hanging off the back of trailers. Arc 3. This is where we want that welder from. You probably don't come here for gas very often because you got plenty of your own. Talk to my wife, she'll agree with you. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. We love you. Look at that. That's the fun stuff. Well, we're here in Arc 3 picking up the plasma torch. I figured I'd give you guys a tour of one of my favorite stores in Roanoke. Got your Miller section, rollers, consumables, parts. Miller's my favorite. What's your favorite? Miller or Lincoln? Miller, definitely. There you go. Good answer. Team red or team blue? Why is it always about red versus blue, you know? Over here we got TIG consumables, TIG rod, brushes. I want one of these. Ellis bandsaw. Hey, this looks like $1,000 off. <laughs> it's bent. Dang, sure is. Thing's screwed up. Look at that. That's, that's terrible. Made that's in America. Just te you can't even service it. <laughs> wow. Look at you now. Model that thing. <laughs> this is a family show, Wyatt. That Black Dog, I've seen some wild loads on a truck, but that is one of the best. Shoo wee! Hello, Black Dog. Here we are at Black Dog Show. What do you think? I know. Turn it off. That's enough. Enough noise out of you. I am the noise. Yeah, you are. What? Okay, let's figure this thing out. Contractor's creation. Site visit, so that's where it's going. And that's the end goal. 17 feet overall. Well, and it, I believe it says it, uh, yep, 17 foot tall, 12 foot wide. Great. All right, so 12 feet is our cut. For today's purpose, we need to cut 12 foot section of pipe. Yep, that's what the drawing says at least. Why, wow, you're the music guy. What do you think? Wow. All right, so now, we're gonna wrap this pipe with this clever little thing. The Curvo Mark. The wrap around. The Curvo Mark. It's got two trademarks. They just got greedy. Look, this one says wrap around. Uh huh. That one says wrap around. That one says wrap around. Uh huh. That one says Curvo. Well, the thing said, look, that, that's bigger. That's than wrap Curvo around. Wrap around. It's a Curvo Mark wrap around. It's a wrap around. Wrap around. Not a reach around. <laughs> this is a family show, Wyatt. Let's mark uh, 12 feet in as many places as we can. That way we have redundancy. About midway. Spectrum 875. And we've got a long extension cord over here. We're gonna reel it all out there. Bro, 
all set up down here. Air and power, time to cut. So we're cutting things out. Tay's distracted with uh, with some fans over here signing. Hey, is something on we're, fire? We're making fire inside. It smells like a campfire. Is the stuff inside on fire? Yep. <laughs> Cam, this is the most ridiculous thing. Fans. I'm sorry. I'm talking. I did shoot a film over the natural. Here we go. This is what was on fire. Well, that's what it takes to go pick up a 20 foot pipe and, and turn it into a 12 foot pipe. We'll take this back to lift art. I have to make some sort of dolly system to where I can move it around. But luckily I got the overhead cranes and I have a forklift and I have a 15 foot ceiling. So that's how we're gonna do it anyway. See you back at the shop. Ready? Just get it low. Get it from, keep it from swinging. And pause with tension and we can rig up something to move it with. Look at that friggin' pipe. Yeah! Yeah! God, now the hard work starts. <laughs> Time to put my money where my mouth is and make some crazy sculpture. Alrighty, hi everybody. How are you doing? Today is an exciting day for a few reasons. One, I am filming on a new camera. I have the Sony ZV-1 and uh, it's nice. I got a zoom. Got eye autofocus, how about that? Got a little grip that I'm holding it on. I got a little tired of the GoPro and I wanted to up the quality, up the resolution and just, you know, this has better stabilization, better focus, better lighting. Theoretically, this is the first thing I'm shooting with it. So hopefully all those things are true. And the marketing jargon is, uh, is what it is. It's gonna take a month or so to get all the way through this project. It is large, not only in scope, but in physical size. So the plan is to take this 30 inch steel pipe and this giant plate of steel and create a helical sculpture. So this is going at a private residence the job was brought to us from, uh, you know, the good folks over at Black Dog Salvage. We're creating a helical sculpture that looks like a, a piece of DNA uh, with the two end bars. It looks like a ladder, but he twisted it. So you got the, the cross rungs, which are, you know, some science nerds out there will correct me. Those are the proteins or the, the ACT or ATG, whatever. I barely remember biology. And then, of course, the, the tube here is going to be the, uh, I'm going to carve that into a helix, basically, with my plasma cutter. Uh, but first, first thing to do is to cut this. This is the mounting plate. This is going to be bolted. Not the, the structure itself will be welded to this, but this will be bolted to uh, the footer, the foundation. 
And so we're gonna cut this into a four by four rounded square with one and a quarter inch holes in each corner on the plasma cutter, on the old shop saver. And then once that's done, uh, we will take that 12 foot tube and clean it up on one end and weld it to the center of that so that it stands vertically in the middle of the shop here. So yeah, it's rather involved. The other thing that could potentially be an issue is the springiness of this tube. So this started as flat plate and um, then they would roll it into a cylinder and weld the joint. And you can actually see the welded joint here and it's a giant weld joint. So <clears throat> there's a chance that this has some natural tension in it. And uh, if I cut away a lot of the structure to make a helix, then it might spring out. So my plan is to leave a, a solid ring at the bottom, a solid ring in the middle, and a solid ring at the top, at least to start, so that I can try to mitigate as much of that spring as I can. And also I will be welding in my ladder bars as I go to further help hold the sides of the helix together. So the reason we're going this route is because it's easier to, to do subtractive manufacturing in a way with this than it would be to, to figure out how to take four inch by three eighths flat bar and roll it into a helix by feeding it diagonally through a slip roller. What do you think? I don't know what we're talking about. Um, oh, working with Wyatt out. Look at this new camera. It's so fun to use. Yeah, it's a good one. Look at it track our eyeballs and our face balls. See that? It'll put a little square around your eye. That's good. I don't think the audience can see that. No, they can't see the display. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walker will edit a square that follows your eye around. <laughs> oh, it's a slow zoom. Because it's actually recording. Oh, got it. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, load this plate on the cutter and uh, cut out the base plate. Steve's back in the shop. Hi, hey. Steve. Nice work. Yeah. You can tell you've been anxious to get back to work. I know. It's so yeah. nice to be back in the shop. Kind of making is great and all, but. No, it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> 0 0.6, so this is a 5 eighths. This is a 5 eighths plate. So I'm gonna square this on the table and then double check the drawing and uh, press go together and see what happens. Well, it turns out I didn't have it drawn, so I'm gonna redraw it. And in that case, I might as well screen capture it. So here we go, to the screen. Here's sketch. Doing inch and a quarter holes in the corners uh, for the J bolts that will be going into the foundation. And I'm going to put a hole right in the center just to help line things up. That way, if I need to center the pipe, I can uh, I have something that I know is in the center of the plate that I can reference that. Now, I need to look up my chart. You can probably see this now. This tells me all my kerf compensation data. So 85 amp shielded at 5 eighths is 0 0.095 inches of kerf. That's the biggest one I've programmed so far. So I'm gonna have to add that to uh, my tool library. Hit okay, and then do this 0 0.0950. All right, we'll export that. All right, so I'm gonna change my tip out here, get an 85 amp tip on this thing. But we're gonna rock with this setup right here, a new nozzle, used electrode, and we're gonna go. Looks like it's standard settings, but I'm gonna double check. All right, we gotta square the plate up on the table. This is gonna get a little violent. It's a big plate of steel. Ready to watch yeah. the IMAX movie? <laughs> Press and go. It's gonna make some sparks. Oh, 
no! Is it off, sir? Did I f up that bad? All right, well, so not as to deprive you at home of knowing what just happened. Cut all five of the holes, and then it went to start cutting the outline, and it missed the plate, uh, which it didn't do anything wrong. I did it wrong. So I d did two things. One, I drew the, the drawing uh, too far from the zeroed edge, which pushed it off the plate. Second thing is it does a lead-in cut, so it pierces outside of the geometry, and then it runs into the geometry, so there's no blowout. Uh, that further pushed the torch off the end of the plate. So what I'm going to have to do is accept the fact that my holes aren't going to be exactly in the corners. I found the line of code where it finishes the holes and it starts the outside cut. So I'm going to change the X, Y, zero, compensate it to the left a little bit, and then resume from that line of code so that it just cuts the outside. I really could just redraw the file and take the holes out, but um, you know, I like doing things the hard way. So we're gonna try that and it's gonna be a little off, but it won't be a big deal because it'll be covered in dirt. So let's see if it works. And see, that's what happens when you don't have a lead in, is it, the pierce hole is just right on your geometry. But for this, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. I should have done that to begin with. I wasn't thinking all the way. Well, there you go. Good idea with the center hole. Well, now it's not the center hole. <laughs> Tension with the center hole. I know, best laid plans. And the shitty part is I can't even use the drawing to make a template for them, for the bolts. Because <laughs> now I have to make a manual template. Yeah. What do you think that weighs? Oh man, I think it probably weighs every bit of 500 pounds. Four by four piece of five eighths plate. I don't know, I'm bad at like- More than I could lift, that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's the next part. Is how to, how do I, it's easy to get it on the table, you just push it off the forks, but now it's like, oh. Normally things get lighter <laughs> yeah, this after is, this. Yeah, this is not noticeably lighter. This not really. <laughs> no, and now I get to switch to my hand torch so that I cut the rest of this away. So now I'm gonna cut the excess off with the hand torch. I swear it does better the thicker you go. All right, there it is. Four by four plate, five eighths thick. What a cut. Shout out to Shop Saber and Hypertherm. Look at that cut. There's barely any bevel on it. I swear, the thicker you go with this plate, the thicker you go, the better the cut seems to be. Love it. So, the crappy part is now, these holes aren't symmetrical, so when it comes to communicating the pattern for the studs and the concrete, it's not exactly right. The holes are evenly spaced. You know, that's good enough. All the holes were cut at the same time, so at least the holes are a perfect square. So now, I'm gonna, clean this thing up, we're gonna level it, and uh, start wrestling that pipe out of the corner of the shop. See what it's gonna take to stand that pipe up vertically and uh, get it on this plate. Well, part two is officially called The Erection. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's an accurate verbiage. Yeah, right. They use it in building construction all the time. Exactly. Get your mind out of the gutter. Yeah, this is on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault we're like this. Yeah. <laughs>